Melbourne Contact Team, Alex Collier. Alex Collier. Webinar 16. Today's topics are Dream Training for the Future. Preparing some of humanity for leadership roles and diplomacy. And current stat. There will be a question and answer session at the end. Good evening, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody, and good morning, everybody, depending on where you are. Um, welcome to uh, our 16th webinar. And uh, I just want to say thanks to Julie for that lovely thing there. So uh, today uh, we have Alex Collier once again. Um, it's been uh, quite an interesting month, Alex, has it not? What are you well, going to be talking about has... today? Indeed it has been. There's a, a great deal going on. Okay, so without further ado, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your time and your space with me. I more than appreciate it. And um, as always, I try to bring you uh, as much current stat, up-to-date stat as there is. We have a lot to talk about today. So what we're going to be talking about is the state of the world, politics and other things. Um, we're going to be talking about dreams, mentoring, young people. We're going to be talking about the soul. We're going to be talking about the regressive groups, the Anunnaki, uh, NASA, um, uh, space signals, um, timelines, the awakening process, the intention of humanity, the intention of yourselves, uh, how negatives can become positives, breakaway civilization, the space program, military industrial complex, stealing the planet, uh, fourth density, and the throwaway technology that the aliens gave our space programs. So. Wow. Plenty to uh, chew on for this uh, kind of thing. And, you know, obviously, uh, with, all those questions, with all those points and topics, we won't be able to uh, have so many questions. So if you're going to ask a question, make it really, like, incisive, short answer, short question, snappy, snappy, no life stories today. All right, thanks very much. Alex. Okay, now I, I would like to address something, and that is to Lauren, whoever you may be, or wherever you may you are, um, we had uh, you had asked a question about the A's, their social structure. Um, we will get to that. <laughs> okay, we will absolutely get to that. It, it will not be this webinar, so I just want you to know I haven't forgotten. It's just I. The webinar would have to be three and a half hours, um, and I just can't get that amount of time here. Okay, so here we go. Um, state of the world. Obviously, I don't need to say much about the weather. It is insane what's happening all over the planet. And it's only going to gradually get more and more intense around the planet. Um, we, we, we talked about this in February and March about the weather. And here it is, okay, in, in its building. It is clear that there is an outside force manipulating the sun and our planets and, and Earth. And it's dramatically affecting the weather. It's dramatically affecting consciousness um, of people uh, on the surface as well and, and possibly inside the surface. Um, however, I'm not actually talking to them, so I don't know. But, you know, there's some other things too. Um, I, I'm, we, we've talked last several seminar or webinars, rather, um, regarding the religions and the uh, Hebrews discussing that they are waiting for their Messiah to come with uh, Nibiru, Planet X. Uh, we also know that uh, the Christians are waiting for the return of Jesus. Well, now what's interesting is that the, um, uh, the Muslims, the Ayatollahs in Iran, are publicly stating that they are waiting for their Mahdi, Mahdi, to come back in a super modern spaceship uh, with the sound of thunder and the power of and speed of lightning. And they are openly talking about that they're waiting for their Mahadi to come in in a spacecraft. Um, 
this is interesting, don't you think, with the very soft and slow rollout of uh, NASA acknowledging that they're getting a signal from space. We have the Vatican talking openly about extraterrestrials, um, life on other planets, and trying to position itself um, at the forefront of this, this thing uh, with the acknowledgement of extraterrestrial life. Um, and now we have the, uh, the Ayatollahs of Iran discussing the fact that their Muslim uh, messiah will be coming in a spacecraft. Um, please don't lose sight of this. Okay, these, this is very, very interesting the way this is all beginning to unfold. And at the very end of this webinar, I, I will try to tie all of these things in together for you because you have the positive and then you have the negative outlooks on these things. I'm sorry, the, the positive and the negative um, going on here. And it, it, it is quite fascinating. Now, one of the things that I have been asked to address today, well, one of the things, there'll be several things here, is dreaming. Many of you, many, many, many of you, uh, even those who aren't on this webinar, but who will be finding it in your time. Many of you are having dreams of ETs. Many of you are having dreams of being in classrooms, being uh, in an a, a educational environment where you are not only learning about Earth, but you are learning um, off-world sciences. You are learning um, about different races. You are uh, being, you are engaged with uh, extraterrestrial life forms, and you know that you're in these things, and you know that these dreams are real. Well, they're not really dreams; they're basically out-of-body experiences, or your dreaming body is in a place where you are being given this information, this data, and then when you wake up, you only have bits and pieces of it. You can't remember the entire thing. I have been asked to share with you what's going on in that arena, okay? You are being mentored. This isn't an accident. You are not losing your mind. You are not crazy. You don't have to change the channel, okay, or adjust uh, uh, the color on, on your set at all. Okay, what's happening is that many of you, uh, who volunteered to be here for this process of, of walking the earth and the surviving humanity through fourth and to fifth density. You are basically being given the tools uh, of what it is that you need to know. Along with that information and knowledge is the, the personal tools you will need to be able to um, view the holograph of what is happening here as it evolves and your triggers of this knowledge are all based on events. Now the reason you are being given this information um, is because there is an acclimation that has to um, Occur to hit all of you all at once with suddenly the presence of extraterrestrials or the presence of starships in the sky um, would pretty much completely overwhelm your subconscious mind. It simply wouldn't know how to deal with this. Now, many of you say, Well, um, you know, but I'm interested in this field, I've been studying it for years. It is one thing to study it. It's another thing to live it. It really is. And this process is to not only acclimate you to the presence and the energy of what extraterrestrial um, uh, visitation is like, but also what their presence is like. Their frequencies are very different than our own. They don't show the level of emotion and um, outward expression of emotion like we do here on this planet. Many of them would even have a hard time 
with it. So they are studying us um, as they are now sharing themselves with you through these out-of-body experiences and these dream states that you're going through, or the travel of your dreaming body to starships, to other planets, to uh, classroom environments where you are being given this information so that as these events occur and unfold, you won't miss a beat. You will be able to step into your leadership roles, to your mentorship roles. You will be able to share with the people around you, your family and friends, what is going on, and you will have the knowledge. And they will recognize that you have the knowledge because you will be seeing how this all unfolds. And because you will, you're being given the pieces of, of basically what's about to happen and what is in fact occurring. This is important. I can't stress the importance of this. Now there have been there has been a lot of talk in the past which I've shared with you in the early 2000s of where the A's had talked to other the other benevolence about giving all of humanity um, the same dream. That is probably going to occur. However, what they realized in looking back at that that there was not enough information um, for the leaders, for the group leaders, um, to be able to fall back on. So you are now being moved and in, in having these occurrences so that you have hard data, that, that you have the experience of being in the presence of these other races, so that you will not be in awe or be enthralled to the point that you will fall into the mistake of worshiping because that is not what this is about. Now the regressives, they're totally down with that. They want you to worship. You know, they want you to genuflect. You know, they, they want all that nonsense. Uh, the benevolence, that's not what they want. They want you to come to the table as an equal. They want you to act responsibly as an equal. They want to engage with you or us as an equal. And that's what this is about. That's what this mentoring process is going is about. So these are not just dreams. Okay, these are real life scenarios. These are actual occurrences that are happening, but it's gradual so that you can acclimate yourself to this occurrence or what is about to occur here very shortly. Um, it's important to note that you are also learning telepathy. If you can remember, uh, those of you in, in your dream state, you are often having conversations with these beings, with these educational teachers, these mentors, who are sharing this data with you. They're not moving their mouth, but you're still hearing them. And many of the conversations that you have with the other people around you if you can recall, you are also practicing telepathy. You are having conversations with them telepathically. This is also important to note um, because in learning this process, in, in learning in the dream state about telepathy, experiencing telepathy, using telepathy, when, the, when we get a little bit further down the road here and you begin to talk to others telepathically, especially extraterrestrials, you will have the experience to know who's being real, who is not. This is imperative that you know, okay? And another way of putting that, who's being genuine and who's full of shit. Okay, that's another way of putting those. That's why you're getting this information and this experience now through the dream state. Because they just can't take you up off the planet. It's real hot up there, ladies and gentlemen. It's getting real, real hot. And um, Mars is, is being virtually shut off. The Mars bases are virtually being shut off from our space fleet um, and those here on the planet. Um, the boundary is changing. It's, it's moving closer and closer to the Earth. And the, their space of influence, the regressive space of influence, is getting much, much smaller. And this is a very, very good thing. 
um, you know, they they're they're going to get their comeuppance, and 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 they, they deserve every ounce of it. Now that leads us to another thing: the space program, the breakaway space program, they, a civilization. They tried to break away from Earth. Okay, but now they can't. Okay, now they have to come back logistically. They have to come back to the Earth. And the question is, you know, well, how are they going to do that? And that was one of my questions to M. How are they possibly going to reintegrate back with the Earth? Well, this is a dilemma. Okay, this is a real dilemma, and the only way that the military-industrial complex and these special access programs and these uh, black budget programs that involve the, the space fleet can do this is if they create a fascist world government. That's the structure that they need in order to be able to do something to make this work. So, and what's interesting is that this world, this fascist world government will essentially be run by a few corporations that are at, at the forefront of the space program, okay, and, and all of this technology that we've been given. Now, it's important to note that the technology that we were given is the throwaway technology from the Orion group, okay? Now, to us, it's, of course, Star Trek, uh, Star Wars, but to them, it was throwaway, okay? It's important to note that. So that, you know, when you see this technology, you need to be aware that as incredible as it is to us, um, it's ancient, okay? It, it, it is, in fact, ancient. Because you need to have perspective in not being in awe not being in a place where you will worship those who yield this technology because none of it compares to the power of the soul. Okay? We'll get to that. So the breakaway civilization is having to reintegrate. There is now talk about the government um, allowing banned technology. This is being bandied about in, in private circles as we speak because they're stuck. They, they're, they're, they can't leave. They have to come back um, and they have to figure out how they're going to integrate all of this because they need the earth and they have to somehow let humanity know about what's going on. So what we're seeing now is a very soft rollout of disclosure Okay, um, not only by the surviving governments, but also corporations. It's actually being steered by some corporations uh, who are telling the governments what to do because some of these corporations have become far more powerful than any government is, uh, essentially because these governments are all in debt and these private corporations um, own the debt. Okay. And, uh, for example, let's say the, the Federal Reserve or the Rothschild Central Bank System. This is a private corporation, okay? These are not government-owned. These are private corporations. So now you have some kind of an idea of what this is all about. And you need to keep that in mind. You can, we, we need to call it what it is, okay? I'm, I'm just checking off these things as we're talking. Now, involved in the dreaming, when you're with these benevolent beings and you're being educated uh, in these classroom settings or these... Uh, outdoor settings or spacecraft settings. They're all different. Many of you are having many, many different scenarios, I'm told. Uh, and it's all based on who you're connected to. Your, your dreams that you're having that you can remember, the components that you can remember, it's all dependent on 
the different types of races that you are connected to because each of them have strengths and many of them are here to bring their strengths to the whole um, to make this whole thing work so that when we move through this crisis period that's just in front of us and what I'm talking about is the changing of the physical planet, the changing of the frequencies, uh, the changing of our physical bodies, uh, the changing of our psychological profiles that each of these races are here to help and move us and step in and say, okay, here's the piece you need. And, and as we, as, and, and we build this movement into fifth density. They're here to assist with that. They can't do the work for us. So we have to do the work. But that's their, that's their purpose is to be here to mentor, to give us the pieces we need so that we can continue to move forward and move in the right direction and get to our ultimate goal. And that's going to happen. That is, in fact, going to happen. Because of the telepathic communication and your presence with them, it would, in fact, appear to you that time has sped up. Now, I can't tell you how many people I hear, even just here at the library, in general conversations, um, I've heard uh, people say to others, you know, God, it really seems like things are moving really fast. And time is time is moving faster. Things have been sped up. And, and I even get and I get emails to this effect. And those in my circle um, say the same thing. It seems like things have really been sped up. Well, there's truth to that. And, and essentially what's happening is we measure time. Like science say, okay, well, things move at the speed of light. To us, they do. To other civilizations that are more advanced than we are, things move at twice the speed of light. Things move at three times the speed of light, etc., etc., etc. Excuse me. It's pretty dry here. Well, what's happening to you guys and to others is that time has, in fact, been sped up. <coughs> and that's because your ability to process information has sped up. You are no longer thinking at the speed of light. You are now thinking at faster than the speed of light. And that's a fact. So you're evolving. Your mind is evolving. You're processing information faster, your cells, your DNA is vibrating at a higher frequency, which is why you are moving into fourth density. That's all part of the acclimation process of when you're out of your body, your dreaming body, your spirit, your soul, whatever you want to call it, is in this environment that is of a higher frequency. When you come back into your physical form in the mornings or at night or right after the dream, you have this frequency with you, this vibration, and your DNA is beginning to acclimate to it. It is beginning to recognize it. And, and it is now adapting to the higher frequencies. This is really important to note. Many of the young people today on our planet who are addicted to technology, they are able to process information enormously quickly. And, and multiple um, and adapt how do I put this they can multitask many different things all at once the piece that's lacking with them however is that their their entire focus or their most of their focus is on technology What, I don't know how this is going to occur, but I have been told by M and others that th there's going to be a move away from technology to the spirit. Because once we can get these young people on board with spirit, 
focusing on spirit, focusing on voluntary introspection, the ability to invest more time into their own spiritual growth, the frequency of this planet will change dramatically and in a hurry. So whatever plan there is to move them into the idea of spiritual reality and soul development is going to occur. I don't know how this is going to happen. It, 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 it hasn't been shared with me yet. But this is a major emphasis. So I have to assume that these young maybe they have um, but it's going to happen or it is in fact happening and see they're the key at this point um, because they have so much energy their frequency is so high already they are already thinking many of them holographically to be able to process so much information so quickly um, and to multitask with so many things all at once where us vintage folks you know we're, we're a little bit more slow we're a little bit more methodical but we're steady okay we've, we've learned some things over the years about being steady um, and moving in a more intentional way where these young people they're, they're not necessarily moving in an intentional way it's more, um, it, it, it appears to be a little bit more chaotic, and um, they just kind of process things as it comes along and then they move on without actually focusing on what it is going on in their life with more intention. So apparently there's, there's a plan in place to make them more aware of what their intention is and to somehow move them away from their addiction to technology, to the damn phones and the video games. Not that that's a bad thing, it, it, it's helped them, but there, there needs to be more intention, more focus on what it is that they're creating now so that they can intend what it is that they want in their life. And this is very, very important because your intention is where your focus is. Your focus is on your intention. And this is where you create physical reality. And we need them to be on board with this knowledge, with this energy, the, these little powerhouses. Um, we need to get them on board. Now, with the religions vested in the savior scenarios. And, and I have shared this with you. There are other speakers out there who are sharing this with you that we have to be very, very careful of a deception here. Now, humanity, it is not humanity's destiny or its authentic direction to become slaves again. We, we've already done that. Okay, Our humanity on this planet's already done that and God, you would think we were done with this. Okay? But apparently not yet. Apparently there are still many who refuse to reclaim their personal power, take back their personal power, and to move with intentional focus in a direction of freedom. Or they simply don't know what real freedom is. Okay? And, you know, maybe they think, well, the government taking care of me is freedom, and that's not it at all. You know, that's the biggest trap there is. Okay? It's understanding what freedom is. It's understanding what freedom curtails or entails. It's, it's about understanding the full responsibility 
of creating one's own life and owning one's own happiness. No one else is responsible for your happiness but you. And you have to own that. But you have to come to the realization that you own that. And, and that's what it is. And that's what and, and that's an absolute truth that you are responsible for your own happiness. So we have, if we look at the state of the world today, <clears throat> we have changes occurring everywhere. We have all of these pundits and alleged experts telling us economic collapse is coming. All these diseases are coming. You have the pharmaceutical companies doing everything they can to continue their bullshit of, of giving you all these poisons and telling you that it's for your benefit, outlawing natural remedies, outlawing plants where they, draw, they take the derivatives of these plants and turn them into pharmaceutical drugs and then genetically alter them so they have all these dramatic um, uh, side effects. I mean, if, do you ever listen to some of the commercials of some of these these uh, pharmaceutical drugs? I mean, you know, if, if you have a bad case of acne, use this. You know, use uh, X. You know, side effects are you know sudden death, shingles, uh, sleepless nights, hernia. Um, anal seepage. I, I mean, it's just you got to laugh. It's hysterical with with the side effects, and uh, you know, and Christ, you, you just you'd rather just have the acne than all this other stuff, because then you got to go get something for that. You know, it's just it's insanity. But people just do this, and you know, God bless them. You know, good luck with that. Um. But this is what it is, and, and, and I mean, I'm not making this up. This is what it is. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, men taking um, stuff so they can be more virile. <laughs> you know, one of them, the side effects is blindness. <laughs> Okay, well, baby, I love you, but now I can't see you anymore. <laughs> you know, uh, that works, I guess, for someone. Not me. That would not work for me. You know, because <laughs> then I, you know, I'll be all excited, but now I can't find you in the house. You know, because I'm blind. <laughs> okay, um, not to distract from what we're talking about here the big picture but I mean this is the lunacy okay this is the lunacy how where is the integration and the integrity of any of this in moving humanity forward into a spiritual realm into a unification process um, in becoming one one race one uh, planetary cohesive consciousness for the benefit and freedom of all. How does any of this stuff work? It doesn't, okay? And my point in bringing it out is we need to see what's truly going on here. And it's important. It's all part of the awakening process. Um, understand that we're being bombarded with all of this information that is being used to detract us from the spiritual movement of humanity. The benevolents are pretty much focused on the spiritual evolution of humanity as well as the planet. Okay, The planet is talking the planet is communicating not only with, with humanity, but with, with uh, other dimensional races. Okay, The planet has already acknowledged that it's going to be moving into fifth density. 
okay, because it itself is holographic, okay, it has fourth and now fifth density uh, life on it, holographic life on it, and it is chosen to move away from third density through fourth into fifth. That's its intention. It is communicating that, which is why we are all beginning this process. Um, and moving with this process, those of us who are consciously aware of what's going on um, and those who are coming in behind us just discovering this, just becoming uh, aware of what's going on on the planet and, you know, asking the questions, what is happening here? What is in fact going on? Now, the regressives have found themselves in a really, really tight spot. And it's, and they've done it to themselves. Now, we talked earlier about the breakaway civilization. They are now trapped. They're having to come back. Now, this information that I'm sharing with you is not so much about the humans from Earth, the Terrans, that are involved in this. This is more the problem of the extraterrestrials, okay, that have been a part of this movement. They are now trapped. They now have to come back to Earth. They, they can't just take off. Uh, they, they tried to disappear with CERN. They tried to use that to hop out of here and to escape. They can't do that anymore. Um, and as I've shared with you before, that those who were going into portals, they were just looping back into a, the other timeline that was created. And as that timeline is being merged, they're essentially just taking a short vacation and they're coming right back here to this present time. Okay, so they're not going anywhere. Now what they're trying to do is to call in reinforcements using CERN to open portals and bring other unfriendlies in that are in that lower fourth density realm, this band of frequency that's in lower fourth density where there is, well, it's, it's, if I were to use an earth term, it's ghetto, okay? It's ghetto, ghetto fourth density. Because now that they can't get out of here, what they're trying to do is as we move into and move through fourth density, what they want to try to do now, this is, this is their end game plan, okay? This is pretty much it. What they think they can do is that they can trap humanity in this ghetto frequency of fourth density using extraterrestrials, using the world's religions and bringing in the new, the messiahs, the alien messiah, so that everyone will be in awe, they will begin to worship, and they will basically, using their own free will, agree to accept this reality as the reality. That they, they cannot, they don't have the ability and they cannot or they don't deserve to move through fourth into fifth density to empower themselves. So essentially what they're doing is they're taking the old world religions that we all live with or have with, have lived with, and introducing one that's combining all three into one where now the aliens are the saviors. That's what's next. And that's pretty much their end game. So that we will accept this fourth density ghetto frequency reality and that we will stop our spiritual evolution there. We will voluntarily do it. And of course all the promises will be made. We will be looking at some some amazing technology that of course is throwaway, but it will be amazing to us. They will come in and they will give us you know some knowledge but not enough to actually free us. Now, this is what happened to the Procyons, okay? And it took them six over 600 years to break free from this. And 
and other civilizations, you know, not only in our galaxy, but in other galaxies. This is essentially what happened. The same thing occurred where they bought into this. They bought this smoke. They bought this lie. They bought this holograph. And they were like, wow, this is amazing. This is it. We're, you know, these are the guys. You know, this is the savior. If we do what he says, we're going to do this and we're going to eventually evolve. Well, it isn't. It's substituting one thing for another. But what's happening is, is that you're just, they're going to give you just a little bit more knowledge and information. Okay, but they're never going to set you free. They will use technology to change your physical bodies. They will use technology to to implant you. They will use holographs to change your mind, your thinking, to slow down your thinking, or to completely divert it into the point where now you are in awe and you become a piece of technology. Okay? And you will see yourselves as technology, encased and entrapped in a physical form that is a piece of technology because it will be altered by technology, using technology, enhanced by technology. You see, this is what's coming next. And um, the timeline for all of this to occur, and God, I hate doing this, but I've, I'm going to do it. The timeline for this, what we're talking about, is December 16th of this year, to December 16th of next year. That's where this introduction, this end game alien savior thing is supposed to, supposed to introduce itself. Okay? Now it could change. Anything can change. This is moving. This is flowing. There is give and take. This is a real-life holographic third, fourth, fifth density chess game, folks. Okay? But as of today, that's the window. Okay? I want you to be aware, as of today, that's the window. As it changes, as it evolves, I will let you know. But I'm giving you this so that you can consciously be aware so that you can look for the signs, okay? There's going to be remarkable, wonderful, loving, spiritual things occurring. And then there's going to be the crap, the shit, the ghetto stuff that's also going to be occurring. I want you to be aware of this because you have to be aware of this so that you can consciously make decisions um, as you see this, as the observer to either buy into it or to not, because as the observer, you will be able to see the flaws in the game plan that is being presented to you. You will be able to see the deceit that's in the game plan that's being laid out in front of you and being presented to you. Okay. And this, and I want you to understand something. They don't give a rat's ass about us. The, the regressives. This is all about them. This is all about saving their ass in this little space that they now call physicality, all right? Because if we move through this, if we move through ghetto fourth density, lower fourth density, into upper fourth, into fifth, it's game over for them. Do you understand? That's what this is. This is all about them saving their own asses, okay? We're just, we're just tools to be used by them because they see us as a natural resource and because we have the ability to create physical space. And that's what they want. They want us to continue this physical space for them, for them to operate. Now as we move into fourth density, they no longer have to use technology to be in third density, you see? They have to use technology to be here. They can actually now live in the space without technology if we hold that frequency for them. Do you understand? This is life and death for them. We are just a, a, a means to an end. That's all it is. And once they have what they want, all bets are off. Now, for those of you 
who have been working with the regressives. It is acknowledged that you were tricked. It is acknowledged that you were trapped because of threats to your family, to your own physical well-being. All of those are acknowledged. But you need to be absolutely aware of something. Once we move into fourth density completely, you will no longer be needed. And those of you who have who are currently working with them, you need to be aware of this. Okay, because this is the Orion model, and I've spoken about this before. They're never ever gonna trust you. Why would they trust you if you betrayed your own race? Okay? They're not. They're giving you a load of hooey. They're making promises they have no intention of keeping. You need to come clean and you need to help your race. You need to stand up for your race. And yeah, it's scary. And yeah, bad things could happen. But you set yourself up for this. Okay? You continue to propagate this, this horrible thing that has befallen on humanity. So you need to be aware of this. Okay? They are never going to trust you if you've tr betrayed your own race. So you need to make some decisions. And you guys know who I'm talking about. Okay? You do. Because we know that you're listening. Your moment is coming. Your, your dark night of the soul moment is coming, and you're going to have to make a choice. And if you stick with them, that's your window. If you stick with humanity, your window is infinite because this is about spirit. You understand? This is about spirit. This is about the spirit of humanity. This is about the consciousness of humanity. This is about the soul of humanity moving through and becoming what it's entitled to be. That is its natural inheritance to be. Okay, You are not going to stop this. You cannot. All you can do is continue to do awful harm to humanity. So you better get with the program, guys. You better. And, and, you know, and I'm talking to the guys in the space fleets as well. It is acknowledged, the rock and the hard place that you are in. It is acknowledged. Okay, most of you thought you were doing the right thing, and it wasn't until you got out there that you, you figured out that it was you weren't doing the right thing. But you were sold a bill of goods. It's just like many people who join the military around the world thinking that they're doing something. They're doing something benevolent, humanitarian, until they get in and they find out they're working for corp basically for corporations, and they're dying for the interest of corporations. Okay? We all get it, guys. We all get it. But there comes a time when you have to take a stand. You just do. There is, and, and it's coming, okay? Your dark night of the soul moment is coming. And, and it is my sincere hope that you have the courage, the fortitude, to stand with humanity and not go for this plan. Because this is end game. If we don't support this, okay, if we turn our intention and our focus into creating what we want as a humanity, this whole thing is going to collapse on itself. Now, this takes a lot of dialogue. Okay, this takes a lot of communication. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there really isn't a forum in the world right now because the medias are bought and paid for. Uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen to the Internet once the UN takes it over or ICAP, ICANN takes it over. We don't know. But you need to understand, humanity is connected in ways we don't even understand. Okay, we are connected by soul, we are connected by spirit, we are connected by interest, we are connected by consciousness, we are connected by the planet herself. Okay, we are still connected, even though every day we're being told, to, being fed all the stuff to divide humanity. 
you know, blacks against whites, Mexicans against whites, Mexicans against blacks, Asians against Western, Westerners, Russians against Americans. You got to know this is all bullshit. It is all bullshit. There isn't a shred of truth to it. It is all dogma and it is all perception that is being fed to us by people we think we can trust. You got to know that these people that we think we can trust, they're being fed it by other groups higher above them. Okay, this is a holographic game of chess, a war, okay, for the mind and the heart and the soul of humanity. It's going to get really, really interesting here. It, it, I mean, it already is, obviously. But we're now moving to the next level here. And, and I, I've tried to, to share this with you and, and, you know, tell you what's coming. In your, in your meditations, in your prayer work, in your quiet time, Focus for even just a few minutes, if that's all you have. See humanity united. See humanity as a heartbeat. Okay, see the world, or see our planet in your mind's eye, as a single heart filled with love, beating as one. You think it won't work? You don't think it matters? Oh, it so does. If we can all do that. It will unite us in ways we can't even imagine. The information, the dream states, more and more of you are going to be getting information. It's, it's, there is no turning back. Okay, what's just in front of us regarding the end game of the regressives, their plan to try to trap us inside this band of frequency. It is not going to be successful, but we have to consciously be aware of what's going on. Okay, you have to consciously intend what it is that you want, because that's all part of becoming a creator and being a creator. And and you know, whoever it was, and, and I know in the Bible it, it's attributed to Jesus. These things I do, ye shall do greater, if ye have faith. Well, have faith in you. Have faith in God. Have faith in the Creator, the isness, the, whatever word you want to use, the Great Spirit, whatever word you want to use, that intelligence that creates universes, that creates the space for us to create within. It's real, okay? That essence, that being, that consciousness, whatever it truly is, it's real. And we are all connected to it. Okay? The regressives, you know, I have been assured that all the broken pieces eventually find their way home. You know, whatever their lesson is, it's their lesson. We don't have to go there. We really don't. We don't need to go through all of that grief, all that pain, all that horror, and we damn sure don't need to create all of that anger, all that horror. We don't. None of us really want this. You know, we want to be able to support our families, feed our families, love our families, be in a safe environment, live in a clean environment, and evolve, okay, and experience joy as much as possible at infinite levels. That's what's up, folks. That's what's happening. Now, technology is technology. But technology doesn't create a star. Technology doesn't create a soul, okay? It doesn't. You do that, <laughs> okay? You do that. That's the ultimate power. That's the ultimate technology to create frequency, to create holographic physicality. That's the ultimate technology. 
Never lose sight of that. Okay? And that is something all of you have within you. All of you. Never give it away. Never surrender it to anyone who does not have your best interest at heart. Um, there's going to be more and more information regarding other planets. Uh, I know that there's, uh, from Proxima, Centaurus Proxima, there's all this talk about a star uh, and signals. You know, they're, they're having to figure out how to tell you that they've been full of shit for 50 years. Okay? And um, it'll be interesting to see how they, how they do all this, how they, you know, um, unravel all the lies and all the deceit that they've been feeding us all these years and telling us how crazy most of us have been, lunatics, etc. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how they now backtrack. Um, don't expect them to apologize because they'll never do that. That is not who they are. Um, but things are going on, okay? Uh, JP, why don't you get ready for some questions? I guess there is time. I didn't think there would be enough time, but it looks like there will be. Um, so I know you can start pushing buttons. Um, understand that the Anunnaki that will be making an appearance whenever that happens, that is not the same group as the regressives that are here. Okay? They're two different groups. They will have two different agendas. I will have more for that on you here in the next webinar. But it looks like there's going to be two groups. Okay, the groups that's here, and then the Anunnaki will be making a guest appearance. Uh, I don't have any more information than that for you at the moment. Um, and then, of course, we have the industrial military complex, the, uh, the breakaway space program, they're having to figure out how to reintegrate. So there's a lot going on. Um, understand that many of the ships that you will see in the sky, particularly the large triangular craft, um, and maybe some of the larger rounder ones, those are ours, folks. Okay, so you don't need to ooh and ah. Those are ours. I mean, you can ah, and maybe, like, you know, acknowledge that they're ours and, like, you know, hey, that's pretty awesome that we can build that kind of technology. But understand that that technology was originally created not to be shared with us. Okay, well, now they have to share it with us. So, um, so this. Here we Alex. go. Okay. Thank you, It's essentially uh, the introduction to a Star Trek universe, a, tr a Star Trek reality that had been held back for 60 years. Yes. Thank yes. God for that. That's exactly right. Thank, um, who do we have to thank? Well, thank the Andromedans, the Pleiadians, the, uh, the Procyonis, the... All the Benevolence, the Cirrus uh, A, the, uh, the Procyons, many, many groups. There are more groups that have... have introduce themselves into this process that I don't know anything about, nor can I even pronounce who they are. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that there's uh, seven groups that are from a neighboring galaxy. So um, they're stacking the deck. That's good. They're stacking That's good. the deck. So it's essentially it's like uh, uh, they're trying to push push something over, but there's a huge wind behind us that is also helping us to push push things our way. It's momentum. There is it's, an enormous yeah. amount of benevolent, yeah. positive, good run up, energy, yeah. momentum that is behind this process. Yeah, and the the regressives, uh, they're they're terrified because this is this is it for them. They're, they're done after this. If this doesn't work for them, and it's not going to. But they're going to play it out because of, of what happens to them if they don't. But it's inevitable. Um, but, you know, they're going to play their last cards because that's who they are. So we're looking at the what everybody's been calling the end game. 
right now. They're, but it's actually not the end game. It, it's not well, the end no. game. And maybe, and you know, I. I, there's I'm, always this feeling that oh, this is just one more and this one more and that's just one more and then then everything will be fine and there's still well, oh there's a lot more to go you know no, there's I, the I, long I, game aspect okay i don't know about fine because that word entails a lot of different meanings to a lot of different people there is going to be dramatic change physically spiritually economically the reality that we've been living in, which has been a trap, okay, unbeknownst to almost all of us, it's been a box. As that changes and it begins to dissolve the reality of what we think life is, as that begins to dissolve, new possibilities, new ideas of what life could be are going to be introduced. That is going to cause many people to have to rethink who they think they are, what they think life has really been about, um, the intention and purpose of life, um, and the possibility of actually being someone who can actually create their own reality. And what I'm talking about is living without money, living without fear, living without struggle, and not living in survival. Almost none of us know what that's like. We have no idea. And if we were presented a reality like that, we would have to totally change who we think we are. Because then we're left with, well, God, who is it that I want to be? And then you can pursue that reality for yourself without guilt, without anything. You can pursue to be whoever it is that you want to be. And the possibility that some of our young people, and maybe some of us vintage folks, will actually be able to get on a starship and move into our solar system and look at other planets and choose to... Um, in a sense, go back to school to learn a, a non-planetary science. Okay? The possibilities are endless. And this is going to be, this is going to happen with many of us. You know? So that's fine. That'd be <laughs> fine. That's fine by me. I'd be fine by you. I'm sure it's fine by everybody else who's on this call. So <laughs> I think that, you know, but yeah, fine. It would be fine. Ah, great. I mean, I'm so, certainly down with that. Yeah, I'm down with that, as you would say. Yeah, why not? You know? <laughs> oh, the chat. I tell you, the chat room, because uh, the, there's the uh, kind of, you know, people are starting to get to know each other in the chat room. So it's really lively while, you, while you're talking as well. Um, <laughs> So you know, one of the things that I've wanted to do, mm -hmm. and I know there's all this talk about uh, currency resets, which may or might now happen. It, it's it's very difficult to know for sure because there's been so much interference to make sure that we don't get any power, you know, or influence. But if it were allowed to happen, you know, one of the projects that is very near and dear to me would be to create homeless shelters for veterans all across the United States or the world. You know, because these men and women have given everything and lost everything in the service of their countries and have had post-traumatic stress and they have just been thrown away. You know, and they're living on the streets and they have nowhere to go. And here in the United States, you know, there's, there's nearly 100,000 homeless people. Um, that have served in the armed forces. 35,000 are said to be women who have nowhere to go. And that is something I would want to do, is to get them off the street, give them a place, a safe environment, and give them the tools that they need to rebuild their lives so that they can be part of this process, you know, and can make their own choices. So. I'm, I'm very excited about this possibility. I hope I'm alive to see it. You know, I, I hope I'm alive that the, the young soldiers 
who are brought home from invading other countries and stomping on their faces, are brought home to build these communities that you talk about. Yes. That's what I want to see. Yes. Yeah. Right on. And, uh, you, you, you know, feel that. Yeah. the psychic attack on me has been unbelievable as of late. Mm. And, uh, and I know many people are going through it. We, JP, you and oh, I yeah. talked about it just oh, before yeah. we went on live today. And it's, it's, man, you know, if they were to take all that energy and screwing <laughs> with us and just take it into doing something positive just for themselves. Yeah. Oh, my God. You totally. know? <laughs> I don't get why they don't get this. I, I really, I don't. Okay. So, so we have some questions, a few. Oh, we've got a few. Yeah, let's have a look here. So I'm, I'm going to do something different this time. I'm going to go backwards. Right. Okay. Um, so this is from Shailini. You had mentioned that there would be meteors or comets entering our solar system and affecting us all. Is that still a possibility? And do you have some timeline for that possibility? Yeah, the meteor shower. Get your umbrella from. Well, the, yes, it's happening. Limited. Well, yes, it's happening. I mean, they talk about it on the news. Maybe not in your country, but they're talking about it in uh, science.com, uh, space.com. Uh, you know, they're talking about this all the time. In fact, we just had one zip right by us that NASA knew nothing about. Um, yeah, I mean, it, this is this is stuff going on. Just because they're not telling you about it on CNN, you know, you have to do the research, folks. And because, you know, you got to remember something about CNN. CNN takes money from foreign countries to make these foreign countries look good. Okay? That is the best news agency money can buy. That should tell you everything. And many of them are the same way. That's why they have advertisers. Okay, you have to do the research yourself. I believe this is why the White House, the Obama administration has given up control of the Internet, is so that they can start um, to remove this type of information away from people's eyes so that you won't be able to find out this data or this research. You know, um, because they, they want to keep you in the bubble. They want to keep you locked away and trapped in their shit. <laughs> I apologize for the words. You know, it's just... There are, there are a few others I, that do, do I, the work. You know, do the work I have invested a lot in this. I have. And, and I can tell you straight away exactly how I feel. There is no way as long as I have a breath in my body, I'm going to let them steal this planet. I'm just not going to do it. Okay? And this is why I get charged emotionally, and I get emphatic, and I get I show emotion, because I know that's exactly what they're trying to do. You know, they cannot steal humanity. They cannot steal this planet. They have absolutely no right to it, and I am never, ever going to surrender it, not as long as I, I can End of story. So there it is. That's the last apology you're going to get from me. But that's what it is. Okay, I'm sorry, JP. That's all right, my brother. You're here. You're heard so much and felt, you know, because when you say things, they just like, oh man, they hit me there, you know, and excellent. So, um, hmm. yeah, actually, uh, here's the thing. Uh, from Kat. Hi, Alex. Can you please elaborate on psychic attack and possibly some of the signs for us to identify and look out for? Yeah, so how do we know that we're being attacked psychically? Sometimes it might just be like, I thought I was just being stupid and ran into a wall or something. Okay. Uh, I can only explain what happens to me. Everybody may have a different experience, but what happens for me is um, when I try to meditate, um, there are these images that are very dark that try to invade my, my field of energy um, when I'm meditating or praying. I, at night, when I go to bed, where I sleep, I am constantly attacked. I am constantly in a space where I, am, I have these beings who will take on different forms, uh, who will try to come into my space and lure me into a trap. Uh, to harm me. Um, there are 
uh, I will be walking down the street and all of a sudden someone uh, uh, will verbally cuss me out for absolutely no reason whatsoever someone I, I didn't even see you know um, it's things like that or I will a rock will fall out of the sky and nearly hit me in the head and there's no one around me you know I'm I'm in the woods but a rock will come down and nearly hit me in the head it's things like that um, and that happened a, a lot especially as of late and it's really kicked up here in the last couple of weeks um, and, and, and I know that, you know, I have some protection. Um, but there is a negative field here on Earth that's really strong. It is really, really strong. It is really fearful. It is dangerous to itself because there is so much fear in it. And uh, it's reacting. It's reacting, and I believe that they're reacting in such a violent way because they don't understand what's happening because they themselves don't have any knowledge. They don't have, for some reason, they have put themselves in a place that they don't remember that they can change their mind and they can become more positive. They can choose. Uh, a different intention of their own. They can change their own frequency by just deciding, I'm not doing this anymore. You see? And, and that's what's going on. And that's what I talk about, psychic attack. Okay? It's when others intentionally wish you harm. There you go. In a nutshell, that's what it is. That's, yeah. So you see, when when we have thoughts, thoughts are things that can be projected and like a projectile, even. Uh, and if it's what you call a you know it's a harmful thought, but loving thoughts as well. Mm -hmm. So it works both ways, as they say. Um, now, here's a everybody's saying Nibiru update, and it's JP. It's not Morgan, but it is JP. Um, here's here's a, a, a few Nibiru. Hang on. Uh, if, sun appears, if, yeah, go on. If, if I had anything more, I would share it with you. At the moment, I don't. Okay? Um, but the window, just I, I gave you this window, December 16th of this year to December 16th of 2017. That's a lot of things are meant to be going on in that window. Okay. And I can't say any more than that at the moment. And believe me, I don't want to give you a dates or a window. I don't. Yeah. You know, I'd I'd rather I'd rather read a fortune cookie. <laughs> Do you know, okay. I've got a whole bunch of fortune cookies that if anybody ever wants the fortune cookie, I can pull one out at random for them. It, it works. It's pretty good. So here's another question that a lot of people may feel, you know, kind of left out. Uh, so this is from Andrea Magdalena. Hello, Alex. Sorry, Mike. Sorry. Why is it that not all of us are being contacted and learn on these spaceships? Or do we just not remember? I, I thought I covered that in the whole first 30, 40 minutes about people are having dreams. It could be that you're being, you're, there's an acclimation process going on. Um, and, 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 and let me just share this with you, you know, as a kid, having experienced this as a child, and then having to come back and share this, like with my mother, who didn't take it well, or uh, other people that I felt safe with who didn't take it well, it was so foreign to everyday life that um, the reaction towards me was horrible. It was painful. 
and it caused scars, emotional scars, because I didn't understand. I think that many of the benevolent groups, they have learned that with dealing with our humanity and the trauma that most of us have had lifetime over lifetime living in this environment where we have been trapped and dealing with these regressive programs, or regressive infections on our consciousness, that they've had to approach this in a different way. And I think that's what they're doing now by taking people out of their bodies, their souls out of the bodies, and teaching them that way so that it's more gradual and that the body and your subconscious and your DNA doesn't have such a traumatic experience when it happens. It's very gradual so that when it does happen, you will be able to step more into it more gracefully um, with greater ease and more personal power that it you're not traumatized and those people around you who are in your circle uh, of like mind also can be more of a support group because they're experiencing the exact same thing that's what I believe is occurring and that's my own personal opinion I think many are having these experiences and yes maybe when you wake up you don't remember all of it but you have pieces you know something happened you knew you were somewhere and I can't tell you why you're not remembering all of it you know I don't know I know that there have been conversations that I've had with Mornay Faseas that when I get back here um, I don't remember all of it and uh, like for example I was given, I, I've been given information and in telepathic downloads from Mornay, and when I ask him, well, you know, I remember this scene, but I don't know what it's about, he will just say, well, it's not time for you to remember that. There is a time and a place for you to know what that information is about so that you will know what to do with it. So, and I think it's more or less not to freak me out, okay? Um because we're babes in the woods here. We are going through, we are leaving behind a reality that we have absolutely participated in creating. Um, but it's not a benevolent creation. It's not our destiny. And it's been someone else's agenda entirely, okay? And they're gradually moving us away from that so that we can empower ourselves. If you remember, or if you've read the old notes, um, it is all about how do we empower humanity to step into itself without us having to come in and completely babysit. None of the benevolents want to babysit us. They want to, they want to get this show on the road, help us get to where we need to be so they can go home and be with their families. Okay? But in order to do that, they have tried to come up with different ways to empower humanity so that we can step into our own power. And I believe that all of these different things are parts of the process. But it's complicated because we're dealing with third density, fourth density, fifth density, and we are dealing with regressives on third and fourth density, okay, as well as benevolence on third and fourth and fifth density. So it's complicated. And we're dealing with an ascension process on top of all of that. Okay? It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff to go through, you know, all at once. So, you know, maybe we could cut them a little slack. Um, and I think maybe we could all be a little bit more patient with our own ascension process and what, what it is that we're learning. I think the focus needs to be more on internal voluntary introspection. What is it that I know? Okay, maybe those are the questions we should be asking. What is it that I know? What do I know for a fact? And at night before you go to bed, just as you fall asleep, tell yourself, I want to remember everything that's going on. 
you know, I don't have all the answers. <laughs> I wish I did. I would tell you. Okay? I would tell you. You know, none of this is for sale. I would tell you gladly. You know, I would. I would tell you gladly. As I have all these years. Okay? What time we got? It's about time, isn't it? It's uh, a we got eight uh, minutes. We got to, yeah, you, uh, you yeah. Okay, from Rancher, telepathy question. I've experienced mentoring dreams and I've made great progress with self, but I'm still trying to figure out how to use telepathy when awake, um, with i.e., an animal or, or visiting tones that in the ears. Any techniques you would recommend? Where and how should you focus your thoughts onto the other parties? Where's I do party? not. I do not have any tips or shortcuts. I don't. I'm sorry about that. Because, uh, yeah. So maybe we, we need a telepathy class in the uh, University of... Uh, the, multi the Multiversity of Light, whatever we call it. I can't remember what we call it. We actually bought some domains, you know, called like Multiversity or the Multiversity of Light. Um, just ready for... Uh, for the next phases. Uh, okay. Ah, right. Ah, no. Good question. Uh, Bjorn. Hi, Alex. I assume the Andromedans also have AIs, however, under full control. Do they make use of these to go against the regressive AIs attacking and controlling us? Now, there's a question. Is there an AI layer over the whole thing of this? The short answer is yes. Short answer is yes. However, the technology that they use doesn't operate on its own independently. It is always being guided um, by an actual soulful entity or entities group. In other words, the groups that control the technology, they all have souls spirit they don't create something that, that has no soul or no spirit to act completely independently on its own so essentially what I'm saying is they use this kind of technology but it is controlled by te telepathy I see everything becomes a drone everything becomes a drone, drone based exactly. you are the master they are the slave no other situation exactly, yeah. exactly. and that's so, yeah, perfect exactly. perfect perfect because yeah. i tell you that's that's, that's I, the best way to say it this they, is the attitude i have with my this is the attitude i have with my computers and i often now fox as to why they do what they do because you know <laughs> i'm supposed to be in charge of these things right Meanwhile, i mean could you, imagine, could you imagine if they thought by themselves and then they would just lock you out they'd say, hate you know, me they'd hate take me me off i'm in charge yeah, stop all that demanding file searching and stuff, especially that database search. Yes. Anyway, right, uh, right. meanwhile, Look at that lost file. Yeah, I'll show it to you. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that would a badass attitude computer. Well, there we go. Anyway, so, um, the ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, yeah, um, uh, I'm just looking for questions which are. Um, uh, there we go. Yeah, uh, contact teams, contactee friends are reporting a change in light body dreams in Deborah. They're relocated from out in space where the light bodies are blocking the dark forces from coming through to now being in the center of the earth to locate something, something that will win the battle. Have you heard any of this? Is it, or is this strategic information? Strategic information. Right. Next. Well done, though. <laughs> good, good. Well done. <laughs> remember, um, I told you, you remember I told you years and years and years ago did you? that they were going to force everything out to the surface right. so it can be scooped up, put on an asteroid, and sent the hell out of here. There you go. I there you see. go. Yes. Very good. Very good. Very. I, I, I love the feeling of that. Um, oh, from Mike. In a previous webinar, you mentioned a false timeline that was created. 
how can one tell if they're in the false timeline or the actual positive timeline? You're in the positive timeline. You'll know. You're in it. Yeah. The, the implementation of this regressive world government is the false timeline. Okay? That's the false timeline. That's really nice to know that uh, that's the overlay and we just yeah. have to walk in nature, touch the soil and realize that we're creating a more natural world around us. Focus on what you want. Yeah. Okay? Be the observer with all this other crap. Be the observer. But when you invest your emotions, when you invest your soul, when you invest your desire, your intention, you only invest in what it is that you want. Okay? Just what you want. Absolutely. Absolutely. There you go. Because where energy flows, where attention goes, energy flows. So be, be mindful of where you put your emotions. Okay? It's incredible. We are so powerful. We don't even realize how powerful we are. You know? But they do, the benevolence do, and, and they're here to try to help. Because obviously this benefits them at some point. You know? And obviously the regressives know because they've been trying to keep us here and, and feed off of it all these years. These centuries, millennia, lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes. So the only ones who haven't gotten it are us. We're late to, the, to our own party here. So... Um, Okay, I think we have time for maybe, I got two minutes. Okay, here's a, a, if the Anunnaki and another faction come to Earth, would they not battle each other for Earth? Would it not be that John Travolta film all over again? <laughs> it is very possible that something like that may occur. We'll have to stand by and see. I don't know the conversations between the benevolence in the Anunnaki when the star system had stopped. I don't know the communications that were going on. I, I don't know how this is all going to play out, folks. I just don't know. If I get more information, I will share it with you. I am sharing with you what I get, what I'm being told. Okay? And, and there's going to be others. There, there are other people who are contactees who are sharing information, and they're sharing it from different perspectives. You know, somehow this all fits together. Um, somehow it all fits together and, and you know it's like in a Rubik's Cube. These pieces all fit together and at one point we're going to get to that last piece and click and there it is. It's all going to be there. We're all going to know. You know it's a process. It's all a process. And um, you know, if we were using 35, 40% of our brain matter, maybe we would have already figured this out. But we're not. We're having to be taken, moved along very slowly because of who we are, because of the trauma we've experienced, because of the programming we've been through and had to live with, you know, to move into a place of self-empowerment. That's what this is all about. They're not going to give us something we can't handle. And they're not going to move us into something we can't handle because they want us to get there and to be able to stand on our own. That's what this is about. That's our end game, is to be completely self-empowered so that we as a humanity can make decisions about our race, about our planet, and about what it is that we want. That, that has to be. That has to be. Okay? Guys, I'm out of time. I got it. I, I got it. I'm out of time. They're knocking on the door. Thank you so much. Thank you Alice. so much for being here. I, I hope this was beneficial, folks. And I, um, I look forward to the next ones. Thank you so much. Bless Alice. you. Bless Thank you. you for Good night. See you next. Good night, guys. Week.